Rich Pyle, take it, brother. All right, here we go. Pitching in the blue lane, the reigning women's world champion of cornhole from Dorchester, Wisconsin, Maggie Geiger. Welcome, Maggie. And pitching in the red lane from Paris, Tennessee, the one and only Josh Glover. You got a couple different personalities squaring off here in this match. Josh Glover, he said, you know what? His biggest cornhole memory is still to come because you cannot hold this peacock down. You've got to let me spread my wings and fly, cat. Oh, that does not surprise me at all. Please look at this fan zone. Please look at these loco crazies over there. Machine Gun Geiger. Oh, yeah, Machine Gun Geiger is a well-deserved name as well. And I, I know what's so funny is because Machine Gun's known as loud, and they just hammer you, and there is not a personality out there that could be more opposite of that. I've never met anybody as quiet as Maggie Geiger. But I can tell you her bag speak loud and proud. That girl is straight up the center, slick side, and you better block the hole or she's going to eat you alive. I do have to laugh as they take their down and backs and get warmed up and got to get a vibe for these center court boards. We were talking about miking all of the players, and she said, could we possibly mic someone else to speak for me? So we thought about going and getting Aaron Candler or one of the other kooks that is part of the ACO and having them speak for her, but... Uh, it would have been a little bit odd maybe having that voice come out of, right there, out of her play. So <laughs> Clever is uh, firing a couple of airmails here in the early down and back. And Maggie takes a, a unique, very long two-step pitch. She does. She starts way behind the board. I step and I stand right at the back of the board. And I, when I play Maggie, I feel very uncomfortable because there's not many people that actually stand behind me when I throw. <laughs> But she does. She takes a very long two-step throw. And I, you, she looked very rhythmed. She's back through one step and up through the other. Well, that is a part of the mental aspect of this game. Who is going to have the tougher mindset? Let's throw it down to Ryan LaBelle, our head official and whistleblower, and let's see if we can't get these two going. love to see that as a player under the spotlight of center court. Oh yeah, that pressure for that very first bag is unbelievable. These boards look like they've gotten mighty slick. You are watching the slick side fly and the sticky side is definitely starting to move way. Oh, more. look at that bag. <laughs> you would love to say that she, she'd love to tell you she did She's that on purpose. purpose yeah. but that's what she was trying to do. And she's gonna try and sneak out and still get her one. She's still gonna get three there, even with having a bag off the board. Well, and I, I would tell you too, we, we laugh because certain people we, we refer to as the bag whisperer because sometimes the bag does something that it only seems like you could have told it to do. You know, <laughs> oh, like you tell it, you get up there and I want you to run to the left and I want you to run to the right and over there and flop and lay down and then <laughs> take a scuba dive right back into the hole. Would you do that, please? You also watch a lot of leaning going on, like, mm. turn, please turn. <laughs> cool, uncharacteristic, but as you mentioned, that... Uh, that board is playing slick, to be sure. Josh lays the low block. Maggie trying to go around it. Um, she didn't quite get around it, but she's got a great place. Glover returns the favor with a bag off the backside. Now, his, his nickname is All Day, and, and, and I'm told that that's because he expects to be around on a tournament all day. Oh, yeah. Uh, that never. Josh is like, I'm, I'll see you in the end. He can uh -huh. lose you. I see you later. Uh huh. Josh will never count himself out. There we go. Maggie with an airmail. All right, we're going to bring Rich Pyle into the conversation. You're you're down there and you're kind of getting a feel for, the, you know, the 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 different styles and the and the different level of of emotion 
What are you seeing that, that you think is going to play to someone's advantage here? Well, I think so far what we're seeing is the advantage is in Maggie's favor, and I think it may be the two-step throw might be throwing Josh off a little bit. I think I believe that she got that two-step throw because she was a bowler previously, if I'm not mistaken. I believe you're right, Rich, and to be honest with you, I would not disagree at all. Josh is a very fast thrower, and Maggie is not. And if you take a player out of their rhythm, it will change their game. That. And, and, and it looks like he's definitely out of his rhythm so far. It's because he's trying to fire the bag the minute Maggie stops. Oh, and she just runs another one right up over the top again as if it had eyes and he's going in hard and trying to get that push and another one off the back side of the board that might be just what it takes to break his spirit because that is a big frame oh my that was completely josh went for a push twice and missed completely I don't know if you guys can see it from up there, but Maggie's bag is coming in on a little bit of a side angle, mm -hmm. which is allowing that bag to hit a little bit to the left of the board and bounce over Josh's bags and into the hole. I well, don't think she's purposely throwing a roll shot. We were just talking that. about that shot. It has its own eyes. You, she, it's like she whispers to it and says, this is what I want you to do, and it just gets out there and does it. And he is absolutely a stand and fire kind of player. And it, I almost wonder if it's kind of strange out of his periphery to see her coming out of his periphery when he just stands at the line and waits to go. If I saw the reigning women's world champion <laughs> screaming up alongside of me, it would intimidate me. As quiet as oh. she is, she's extremely intimidating with that bag. Oh, and one completely off the right side. You hear, you hear Josh telling himself to calm down. He does. He got excited for a minute because Maggie gave him a chance, but he's got to calm down. He's got to listen to himself. He's got to take a step out, take a step out, and do something to reset his rhythm. Well, and it's interesting because when he said calm down, he did just that, Rich, and, and you can see, you, you can feel it. I know you are close enough to feel the angst. Oh, you could definitely feel the tension down here on the court. He, uh, Josh came in here, you know, happy-go-lucky, pumping the crowd up, not as focused as maybe he should have been. And now he's honing some of that back in and focusing, but he he has to at 13-0. Look where he's standing now versus where he was standing before. He stood back and let her have that bag and didn't stand there on the firing line. What did I tell you? He's got to figure something out. He's got to step in, step out either act like it's his first bag every time or something. Right, and from this angle, look at the difference in the arc in their shots. Maggie's coming in with just such a high arc. Which I believe is what's helping that bag that's coming down on the angle bounce over that other bag. Now there, Josh, able to take uh, advantage of that backstop, but you've got to think that bag is coming in this on this throw. She's going to try and make it come in. Oh. Mm. Left a little window there for him. Josh flipped it over. Oh. Oh, and it just gets hung up just a little bit. But that angle did give you a really good feel for the difference in that arc of her shot and, and the wind-up that she gives it versus him just standing and delivering. Oh, for sure. And Josh, with that, wanted to sneak out four. He does get two. He's going to get first bag for the first time in this game, and he's got to figure out how to take advantage. Is he going to try and throw a block, see what Maggie does with it, or is he just going to try and go hole for hole with her? And to be honest with you, with the way this game is throwing, I don't know that I would want to do that. No. I wonder if he was thinking, as a strategy, he was going to try to distract Maggie with those shoes. <laughs> <laughs> well, there are plenty that would tell you that Josh Alday Glover is a human distraction, top to toe. So it's the shoes uh, down to the up to the top of that lid. <laughs> I just. That's a nice bag right there. It proved the point. Josh is trying to block her because she tried to go around. It made her make a mistake. Josh was able to capitalize on it, get the push. And she's going to try and get this other bag, probably. If I have a 13 to 2 lead, I'm going to take a chance. Sure. Oh, and off the board. Not only not what she wanted to do, possibly the worst possible thing. Oh, most definitely. She just gave him seven. That's going to take a massive cut into the lead that she's got. So the frame worked. Josh got a block. He got points out of it. And again, see if Rich, he stays with it. He, he stands back, he assesses, he slowed down. Kat's been talking about the pace of play a lot in these first few matches, but he seems to have settled in. 
he does, and it's not easy to distract Maggie. She usually is very laser focused, but something has gotten to her head so far from what Josh is doing. We talked all day long about controlling the center of the board. Get that trash out of the way. And Josh is controlling the center of the board right now. I think Maggie was trying to just lay it behind. I don't know if you heard that. A little trash talk, literally. As Josh said, get that trash out of the way. And Maggie's response, yeah, I was waiting for it. <laughs> oh. oh, and he takes two down. <laughs> they thought about it. They said, let's do it. Let's dive in. I think Maggie's going for the block. Mm -hmm. And he's got an airmail as good as anybody. So now does he want to take that chance or does he want to play it safe? His he... fan zone's telling him to rip it, and I'm telling him the same thing. All right. You got the momentum. Oh. You need to keep it. Oh. Now what's Maggie going to do? The back of the hole is open. It is open. The front is covered, but the back of the hole is open. She's laying up. And she laid up. I've watched Maggie Geiger play enough to know that she's very smart in her play, and she's going to try and limit as much as possible. Had she made a mistake there and gone for that airmail and knocked Josh's in, you're looking at giving up six points, and she can't afford that. No, not at this stage. And uh, honestly, with the, the score now being adjusted, and, and, and obviously just getting the points that he has earned and taking the lead, a lead that we did not really see coming early on the way the game was being played. She has answered and up and over with another one of those seeing eye bags. He did not get the push he wanted there, I don't think, or is he just really just trying to stack up and get in her No, way? I think he was trying to push and it cut off to the side on him because he was very disappointed in that bag because of that right there. Had he pushed a little bit and stacked up, it would have made her harder to clean up. So he was too far off to the side and he knew that she would just push him right out the way. Well, they are both sneaking up on the hole here as of the last few pitches. She wants these points. She got them. You saw a big sigh of relief on her face. Uh, she has not made a point in a while. I think that that may be uh, the point that brought her back into this game. Well, and Rich, you mentioned earlier when the uh, Hurt brothers were playing so much. We, we have a mic. We didn't really hear them talking to each other. It was mostly done with, with facial expression and looks and glances. And, you know, can you read her face? Has it changed since the beginning of the match? She seemed a little bit more confident before. It, it did uh, at the beginning of the match. Uh, it, it, she's usually very cold, very straight-faced. Mm -hmm. um, and she continued that until Josh came back and scored those seven points on her. Then she looked a little bit anxious. After that last round, though, it seems like she's gone back to that cold, strong, hard face. Yeah, when her getting those two points last frame was huge for her. She needed first bag back. She needed to ensure that she could put her first bag in the hole and allow Josh to block. It gives her the upper hand automatically because she's got one in and he doesn't. Trying to figure if she's going to push this or block it. She's going around. She's going to go through the side, try and clean oh, everything wrong up. wrong side. If I'm Josh, I'm going to just try and sneak in here, but I don't think that's what he's going to do. Oh, oh, and he leaves it, leaves it up high, and that gives her a little bit of breathing room there. And I do think I agree. I think she just needs to take a deep breath and exhale and maybe get back to what it is she said she wants to do with that 20 grand. She wants to buy a beer for her dad and her playing partner, nice. Wayne Rowell. So that was with 20 grand, she wants to buy her dad a beer. And I, as a father myself, I say, you know what? I'm in. <laughs> Nice bag that leaks in a little bit off the left side with that first bag from all day. And answered. Hole for hole. Oh, there's that little, not exactly where he wanted that one if he was placing it as a block. She takes advantage of it, drops in off the back side. Josh is contemplating trying to grab it or just go in Oh, because of that she right like, there. With that jerking to the right bag that she's got, this could go right around that. It could. It could definitely put her in oh. position. Oh. Well, with one off the back. <laughs> she was. That allows her to retake the, retake the lead. But. She 
It's almost as if she doesn't know. It's a, she doesn't seem to want to look at the scoreboard. I wouldn't. She no. just did. Just put From the this angle, I can see hole. she just did. Okay. Oof. If I'm her and I looked at the scoreboard, I know it takes one bag to finish this game. God damn it. And we know she's got that bag. Now, airmail, not really. It's not her game. Her she game, but she plays much more of a position game or just own the center of the board kind of game. Ooh, beautiful bag there by Glover. He snuck right around in that hole on her side. She's going to have to take him to get herself. He's going to try and push here. Boy, and he, you know, he went sticky side, and it's just, there's just not enough, as you, I think you used the technical term, oomph, behind it, it earlier. It wasn't. <laughs> there wasn't enough oomph behind it. He, the, what he did there was he was trying to push and replace. He wanted to leave himself in front of the fort to in guarantee to get oh. points. He got super lucky there. She laid that other one to the side. He's still going to get the yep. points out of it. He had the oomph, and he used it as a, a little bit of a bumper. Well, this one's going down to the wire. This I did not expect this game to go as long as as uh, as it has, but uh, one point away from Josh Alday Glover taking out the higher seed Maggie Geiger, our only female who made it into the final 16. We had lots of females that were working their way into the early rounds on Friday, and lots of players had the opportunity to play their way back into this 16-person winner-take-all $20,000 tournament here on uh, Sunday. But I would tell you that if you ask the uh, Women of the ACO, and I am Maggie Machine Gun Geiger, a fantastic representative for the ladies' division. Oh, most definitely. As a female that's lived this life for a long time, Maggie has definitely proved her place here. This game is not how she's wanting it to go at this point because she's got one off and she needs to force. Oof. That could have done it right there. That he's, may be the game yeah. right there. He's feeling it. Oh, he oh. left it open, but it's off the back. She said enough's enough. Oh. That is not, I don't believe, what Josh thought was going to happen or the way that it happened. But I'll tell you something. I'll tell you, you we saw the exact moment where everything changed. All right, Rich, he, he, he changed things up there by just stepping away for a moment, and it seemed to get the trick done. Jo Josh, was that what you expected to happen uh, during this game against Maggie Geiger? I do. They don't call her the machine for nothing. It, it started off uh, pretty much not in your advantage. It didn't. I've had a rough... Let's say this year alone, I like to fight from behind. I don't like it. It puts a lot of stress on the heart, but... It makes me buckle down and concentrate and focus even more. Well, you come from behind this whole tournament. Just you were the person that won the spot in order to be able to come into the top 20 to to make it to to the, to the Saturday game yep. and then move on to the Sunday game. So you have been coming from behind the whole time. I have. Uh, even my game, my playing game against Randall Garrison, I was down 17 to four and buckled down 121-19. I mean, fighting from behind is what I do, I guess. It's not well, a good thing, but I do it. Keep on playing from behind as long as at the end you win, right? That's the only way to do it, I hope. Congratulations. Thank Good you, luck. sir. <laughs> Maggie. Rich. What happened? You came out so strong. I know it. I, I don't know. I don't know. Josh just caught fire, and I fell behind. Did it really change your mindset when you gave up the seven points? Definitely, yeah. Because you really didn't look like you was able to regain your composure after that. I could see it in your face. Normally, you are stone cold. You get no emotion. But after that point, you had a hand to yeah, kind of let it down a little. rounds like that away and expect to win. Oh. It's, it's hard I'm, to come back. It is hard to come back. But as Josh said, he likes coming from behind. And he did. <laughs> that sounded weird. OK, oh. so anyway. Uh, <laughs> Maggie, I'm sorry to see you go. Congratulations yeah, for being you. the only woman that actually made it to yes. this this tournament. Yes, thank you. You're, you're a good representation. Thank you. We'll see you. I'm sure we'll see you around. Thank you. Well, she absolutely thank did, Cat. She represented the women's division. Super strong, Josh Alday Glover, able to really, I think, break her concentration. And I think it was that dirty bag when he said, he said, get that trash out of the way. And she said, I was waiting for it. She knew. I mean, I said he is a human distraction when he plays. 
I think that might have been where it broke. Yeah, it doesn't take much to really throw someone off their game if you get the personality that Josh has next to you. Well, I'll tell you something. We have our seven and number 10 seeds as we continue through the first round. We are working our way toward a $20,000 payday that big check cashed at the big bank. Who's going to take it? Our next players are up and ready to be introduced by Rich Pyle. Rich, it's all you, brother. At the big bank, who's going to take it? Our next player. Rich, it's all you, brother.